Howdy, howdy, howdy again, my friend. Teresa here. Decided to come on here and do a quick update video. You guys know today's been a hard day for us, as it is for anybody who has, who anybody who owns pets. Um, CJ, uh, oh. Uh, was euthanized at about, you know, between 3.30 and 4. Um, she went quickly. She went peacefully. Bet was very tender with her. Brad stayed there and held her. I had to stay home because we thought Brad was going to have to um, take her and bury her and then go to work. And this was um, not real close to where we live. But I'm so relieved. She's out of pain. And the bed even said, you can tell you, you guys really loved her and took really good care of her and did everything you could for her. And, you know, just those words are so comforting. Uh, because you always want to make sure that you've done everything you could for your animal. That really helped so much. And yes, I've sat here and cried. I kept it together pretty much all day until I had to bathe her again this morning because she had just she just needed to be bathed just about every time that you would change her and we were changing her very often. Um, it just got to that point with some different body function. Um, and that was hard enough because you could no longer stand or anything. And I'm not going to go into real, real big de details, so don't worry. But, um, then this afternoon when I did that for the last time, that's when I lost it. But I held her and I, you know, Kept loving up on her and telling her what a wonderful dog she was and how much we loved her and, and stuff. And, uh, you know, you could just tell she was so exhausted and so tired and so weak and stuff. And it's like, you know, this is the last act we can do to, to really show our love is to help this wonderful, beautiful creature that God blessed us with. And I really feel like the animals that come in our life are such a blessing. They give far more than we ever give them, I feel. But to help her cross over. And, you know, we were blessed yesterday, like I said, with a, a, a new friend, you know, a, a subscriber that's been watching for quite a while. Um, wanted to, to give us a gift of, of some money to, and, um, and did that. And then we knew then we, we then had the option to go ahead and, and um, have her put down if we had to. And like I said, I knew last night. And like the vet said, they always let you know when it's time. And I've found that in our case anyway, that animals will let you know when it's time. And she certainly did last night and, and this morning and stuff. And, um, you know, she did sit up and um, look out the window a little bit on the way over there. But then she would just be so weak she would collapse. And like I said, we've done everything to strengthen her back up. You know, I mean, we brought water and food to her and all, any kind of food she wanted and stuff. You know, it just, it just was time to vet. He said there's nothing we could have done. Um, but then I have to tell you guys of another miracle that happened. We had a very good friend of ours who, they moved to Florida. Oh, let's see. Probably about four months before we did. Um... And uh, to a different part, to a different county, further down. Uh, you know, and I told you guys, mentioned them before, that they have um, uh, 
these uh, special needs children and stuff, and they're a wonderful couple, both retired from the police, you know, from uh, uh, civil service, you know, from police and stuff, and uh, wonderful people, and um, she texted me, or she messaged me, where I was at the vet, and said, you know, if you're wanting to have her cremated, and it's just because you can't, you know, afford the expense, we would like to help. I told her thank you. Because in our heart of hearts, that's really what we wanted to do. We'd had Max Creaming. We'd had, you know, Angus. We'd had a lot of our uh, animals creaming, especially if they're larger and stuff. Um, and, uh, sorry, my phone's going off. And, but we knew there was no way we could afford it at this point in time. And we've been faced with that long ago, other points in time, you know, where you just really cannot afford that option. So I gave her Brad's uh, cell phone number. She texted him, I texted him, I tried to call him, no answer. And then I looked up, I remembered what he told me the name was. Briefly, I could remember what the name was of the vet clinic. And um, I looked it up and gave it to her. This wonderful woman and friend called the vet clinic. Now picture in your mind that Brad is in the room. You know, first they gave her a sedative. I kind of put her to sleep. She knew he was still there. Gave, gave him a little bit of time, you know, to hold her and say goodbye and stuff. And then, let me turn that down. And then, you know, they come in to give the injection. And I guess she went within less than a minute, just almost immediate. If you ever know, some animals seem to take longer than others. And I know it also has to do with, you know, you know what their pulse is and stuff. Uh, but anyway... While that's happening, literally, evidently, my friend was on the phone, our friend was on the phone with the vet clinic, setting this up to pay for her to be euthanized and for her to be cremated. Brad came out and said, is there some place I can go? Because, you know, he was getting ready to, to carry her back out. Can I go around the back? I don't want to have to carry her through the lobby, you know, and, and, and upset your your other uh, uh, customers and, 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 you know, go through that. And he said, yeah, I just pull around the back. And they told him where. And he came back in and he goes, yeah, I need to set, settle up the bill. Well, they're, they're getting ready to do the bill. And the, the other lady that works there at the clinic was on the phone and then uh, talked to this lady and then this gal that was helping Brad said, um, just hang on a minute. And she went and talked to the doctor and Brad like, oh, God, what, you know, is it going to cost more than, than uh, we had thought and stuff, you know. And then she said, the doctor would like to talk to you. Well, Brad went back there and he said, it's all been taken care of. She's gonna, and Brad said, what do you mean? She, he said, she's going to be cremated. And, and Brad said, we can't afford that. And he said, somebody else already took care of that and took care of all the arrangements. So when you think And I know a lot of us get to that point where we think that there's no good people left and there's no, there's no real human kindness left. I hope you remember this story. These people are not rich at all. These people struggle like we all do. And like I said, they've got special needs children. And my friend is not in, in the greatest health either. She's got a lot of physical problems. But to do that, to reach out and do that and say, you know, we love you guys and, 
And we want you to be able to have her because, you know, they know that we will wait until we can buy a place. And then, you know, we've got a couple other uh, dogs that have been cremated that we have with us. And, and, you know, and that we wanted to take care of them all together. It's just incredible. Just incredible to me. Pat was crying when he talked to me on the phone. You know, he said, was that so-and-so? Because I don't, I'm don't, not going to see who it was. So I don't know if I have their permission. He goes, was that so-and-so? Are they the ones that did it? And I said, yeah. And he says, I got to come home for a few minutes. He needed to change clothes. You know, and he wasn't going to have to go dig a hole and, and, and bury CJ. He needed to kind of collect himself. His boss said it was okay if he was a few minutes late for work. You know. But isn't that just amazing, you guys? I mean, I, Brad and I are spiritual. We're not, we're not into church, churches. And, I mean, everybody's different. It's just we've had some bad luck with it. And I don't care what you believe in. What you believe in is what you believe in. And like I said, I don't really discuss religion or anything. But whether you believe in God or whatever you believe in or whatever kind of God type, you know, or goddess that you believe in, whatever, you know. But two blessings that happen just day after day. You know, this wonderful woman who who, who I'm quickly becoming friends with reaches out yesterday with this wonderful email and says, Hey, you know, I just want to be able to, you know, to gift you guys with a little bit of money in case you have something happen or if you have vet bills, you know, if your dog takes a turn for the worse and, and stuff. And, and, you know, we have a lot of similarities in our life and stuff, you know, um, and, uh, you know, uh, so, you know, you have a, have a new newfound friend there who I really enjoy talking with and exchanging emails with and stuff. And then today, you know, being totally surprised and, you know, trying to get this through because, you know, I just could envision that Brad, you know, got done and he's carrying CJ back out to the Jeep. And then, you know, He's, uh, you know, trying to collect himself enough to, to do what he has to do and everything. Oh, I have to look around and see where, oh, he set a collar up there. Um, we always do keep their collars. What's that? And then I started bleeding here. Not sure why. Hmm. Must have scratched myself. But anyway, it's just incredible to me. I mean, and I seriously, I do not know what I would do without all of my friends and my small select family, you know. I was letting my daughter know today because my one daughter, uh, her kids have been around CJ uh, quite often. And so I knew they would be upset. And so I wanted to let her know um, so she could tell them, you know, in however way she thinks is best. And, you know, I made sure when I uh, when I posted it on Facebook that I made sure that my granddaughter couldn't see the post. Because, you know, that's the last thing that she needs. She's in junior high to come home and, you know, shed some time to herself before her brother gets home. And, and she has a Facebook and... She didn't need to read that, you know, that would really upset her because she really, really is an animal lover, lover and, and stuff, you know, and they also have a beagle, they have a purebred beagle that they got from a puppy, or I don't think it was really a puppy mill, but it was a rescue situation. But she even, we were talking a little bit, she's even said that she, uh, misses us, and that meant so much. I've really been struggling with that concept that, you know, maybe you moved from an area and nobody missed you at all. It's been a rough time, but 
I just don't know what I would do without all you guys. I just, you guys, the love and support and just virtual hugs and, and stuff. It's just, I'm kind of overwhelmed. But I just want to tell you guys thank you. I told a friend of mine I wanted a drink. And I'm not really a drinker, but a drink sounds good. I wanted a cigarette. I quit smoking three years ago. No, I'm not going to have one, but it sure does sound good. And chocolate. <laughs> and I told my husband that he goes, well, I can do the chocolate for you. <laughs> so he is going to bring me home some chocolate tonight. Well, like a chocolate bar or something. He is going to just get a, a frozen pizza for us to cook because I don't really feel like cooking and stuff. So we're going to do that too. So. Anyway, I'll get off here. I just wanted to tell you guys about that one, that miracle and that blessing that we had and and stuff. And CJ is at peace now and she's whole and, you know, like I said, she's been wearing diapers for about a year now. I think we started last November with her wearing diapers and, uh, you know, she rocked it, man. She would go out there and, you know, we always took her diaper off and we let her out back and stuff. But, man, she'd rock that. <laughs> you know. we we'll call her roundy houndy. And then even, let me tell you guys a couple more stories about my dumb dog. But you guys are used to hearing me talk about my dumb dogs all the time. They're not dumb. But even, even here, I was training the dogs. I put pieces of dog biscuits in the plastic container that locked so I could shake it and that way they really start barking I'll say leave it leave it and you know after a few times they quickly learn just they quit barking then they got one of the treats out of the box except for CJ CJ of course got it in her little head that no if I said leave it that means she need to bark until she got a treat So, yeah, crazy dog. But she'll be up there, up there with all the other animals. Frolicking, playing, you know, or she might even be with her first owner. She, her first owner was, um, from what we know, was an elderly lady that passed away from cancer, and then the family couldn't or wouldn't keep her, and that's when she ended up going to Humane Society. And then whatever happened there, she had to have some corrective surgeries on her knees and stuff that were busted and etc. But anyway, she's in a better place. And I lit a candle for her just about the time I knew that she was crossing over. I always do that. So. She was a good dog. So I'm going to keep the diaper covers, you know, they have a slit in them in case I have to use them ever on Missy. And I have like a half a, we, we're buying the diapers by the box, I have half, half a package, so that would be 48 diapers. Um, they're size 3. Um, I'm going to keep them because I'm sure we'll run into somebody around here that needs some diapers. You know, donate them or donate them somewhere. So, yep, well, that's the way it is. Anyway, I'm gonna get off here. But thank you guys again for everybody that extended your hugs and 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 your condolences and just being so nice. And stuff. I really am blessed. So we'll talk to you later. Bye.